Hey, welcome back everyone. I just want to step in real fast at the beginning here and let you know, yes, it's a very long video. It's split up into three parts. An initial trip, a second trip that I added at the last minute, and then a third part where I talk about the lens in depth and we go over some of the photographs. I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll watch all of it. I think it's worth it, but make your decision on your own there. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming back. Let's enjoy the video. Hey, welcome back everyone. Um, today I'm heading down to the river again and uh, I'm going to continue uh, doing the rundown of this uh, Nikkor 24-120 f4 lens. Um, I, I think it needs a lot more time for me to really see what it's capable of and I haven't had time to get out and shoot with it. And now here we are between Christmas and New Year's and, and I have a day so I'm going to get out and, and do that. Um, I'm heading to a mostly swamp area that has a boardwalk and uh, cypress trees and reeds and uh, all kinds of cool things. So should be a good day with this rain and overcast to do some black and white work um, and possibly some color if I see anything interesting. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do with this channel and how I'm gonna handle my reviews. Um, you know, nothing is set in stone when a YouTuber says this is what I wanna do with my channel, but and what I've been thinking is, since uh, you guys have given me such positive feedback on this lens, um, I want to finish the review on that, and then I, I want to really try to make reviews that are real world. I'm going to take you out and we're going to use what I'm reviewing. We're going to make some landscape photographs, or, um, you know, God forbid I make photographs of something else. That's mostly a rarity for me. Um, and we're going to give, give these products a shakedown. And, and really see how they will work for somebody who gets out and actually works with them and isn't just shooting a brick wall or newspaper or whatever. You know, I always said I wasn't really gonna try to be a review channel or anything like that, but I think in the end, I really don't mind doing some reviews as long as I handle them in a, in a good way that, that makes me feel like I've, I've done my viewer a service and, and done it the right way. So anyway, Let's get out here and we're going to see what we can find, continue to work with this lens, and uh, yeah, I'll see you at the river. Well, welcome back everyone. Uh, today I've come down to the river and uh, uh, we're going to check out this marshland and see if there's anything cool to shoot over there. Um, as I said before, it's it's got uh, cypress trees and uh, reeds, grasses, you know, marshy things. But it also has um, beech trees nearby, which at this time of the year, they've gone from brown leaves because they obviously changed. They don't drop their leaves right away, though. So they've gone from brown leaves over to these beautiful light tan. And I, I just love that. Uh, that texture and um, that contrast to the background. And in fact, it works extremely well with black and white photography. So um, we're going to see if we can find something cool along those lines today. Um, let's go take a walk, see what we can see. All right, let's do it. So I love doing shots with reflections and the water's so still today that we have direct reflection of these fanning out uh, reeds. I guess they're, I'm gonna have to look up what they are, some kind of reed I think, but they're blooming or they're past blooming, but the, bu the buds are still on them. And so they make for this neat little textural element. And it's sort of foggy out here today, at least out on the river, there's a lot of mist. And so that's a good, nice neutral background with this sort of Rorschach test style reflection going on in the foreground. So 
So if you look here, um, I'm really enjoying the way this, this reflection top to bottom is happening and that sort of dividing line. And I think that little spit of land, um, vertical of center, uh, just above horizontal center, I should say, is, is really kind of an interesting little element sticking out into the water. And it sort of balances what's going on on the bottom left, which is a little heavier. So it should work out as a composition. Beautiful, right? I mean, look at this beautiful boardwalk. Um, the boardwalk goes around. I'm not sure, uh, unless I go back and get my boots on, I'm probably not gonna go that, that way. I may need to go get my boots on. But I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna go check all of these areas. It's a beautiful day. Should be a good day for some photographs. All right, so, this cypress tree here with all the knees around it i think this is really interesting and the reflections in the water are also really really interesting so i'm trying to figure out a composition that includes the trunk of the tree the knees and some of the reflection for this first shot so let's see what we can do all right let me show you how this exposure or how this composition looks come on over here with me All right, you see here, this is our anchor. That is the root. Um, and then all the little knees are coming up all around the image. Hang on, let's get rid of that. All right, all the little knees are coming up around the image. And then some of the reflection in the water, which I think actually looks pretty cool. It's a, like a really sort of complex web down in the water. So let me go ahead and take this shot and uh, we'll see what else we can put together. put together this composition um, I've worked on it quite a lot and I <coughs> excuse me I'm not entirely sure it's gonna be exactly perfect but if you look here the grouping of cypress knees I think is really quite attractive and um, I like how it's got the central big one and the smaller ones on either side and then these reflections of these trees that are in the back um, I, I like the way those look. I like that they all point down towards the bottom, which leads your eye back towards the reflection of the cypress knees, and then your eye comes back up to the cypress knees again. Um, overall, pretty strong composition. As we see, the wind is picking up, so the water's starting to move. Glad I shot it while it was still pretty still. So, as you see behind me here, these are, the, these are the beech trees I was talking about, these beautiful sort of light tan leaves. And if you can get that with a background of, say, a pine forest, and frequently beech trees grow near pine forests, or you can get it with a background of a lot of just nondescript tree trunks, it could be really, really nice. So, I'm out on a search for that now. Let's do it. It's been a really nice day so far. It's beautiful out here and you know I'm walking through these swamps and, and wetlands and marshes it's just absolutely stunning out here I, I love coming out here I've been 
walking around for about 45 minutes and uh, I once again thwarted by my idea it uh, it's something I keep trying to get and I keep missing um, I'll keep trying every year every single year I'll keep trying to get this and eventually I will find the shot I'm looking for that's one of the things about being a landscape photographer you get an idea of something you want to be in your brain and um, you just hold on to it and you polish it and you think about it and eventually you stumble upon it and that's what, uh, that's what I'm hoping will happen with this one it's been a long time coming so just as I thought I was completely thwarted I've come upon this uh, kind of interesting tree with nice bleached out leaves um, it's not the composition I was thinking of but it's still I like it, so I'm going to photograph it. There's a dead stick in the shot. I need to move it. But other than that, I think this is going to be a cool one. I know some people have a real problem with that, but come on. What will you do in Photoshop when you can just take a stick and move it? You can see here. <clears throat> sorry, I've got the auto timer on that. Um, so you can see here these light colored, really tan leaves making up the bulk of this composition here. And then in the back, what you end up with is this interesting tree growing right out of the ground. And then a background of leaves. Um, we'll see, it may or may not be something that works out, but as it sits right now, I kind of like it. Well, it's, it's been a pretty good day of shooting. Um, I, I got some nice shots. I got to walk around in this beautiful wetland and up in the woods. Um, this is a beautiful place. And uh, I will have to say, I'm pretty pleased with this lens. It's sharp, it handles well. Um, the waterproofing seems good. It's a nice tight seal when you extend the barrel. Um, overall, I, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. So we'll talk about it more back at the studio. Um, and we'll talk about the photos I took today. Uh, this battery's about to die, so, uh, well, I was trying to talk to you back there, but, listen, I want to thank you for being here, uh, if you, if you made it through this and, and you think it's worth it, you really enjoy the content, please, I'd love it if you'd, uh, give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, um, and, uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell, because that'll let you know when I put a video out. Well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, that was a really fun trip. I uh, really enjoyed getting out there with this this lens and uh, this new vlogging camera and putting it all through its paces. Um, I was extremely pleased with the results I got. And in fact, I'm going to throw something extra on this video I hadn't planned, put, planned to put in here. Um, yesterday we had a blizzard. Only got about 10 inches of snow, but it came pretty fast. And so I went out and uh, went snowshoeing a congressional cemetery which isn't far from my house and uh, yeah so I got out there and I made some more photos and uh, shot a little tiny bit of video so uh, I'll, I'll show a little bit of that and uh, then the photos and then uh, we'll sit here and we'll talk some about those photos all right let's watch it oh yeah guess who's snowshoeing through the city this guy It is insane out here today. This is something. I'll tell you, I've got about a foot of snow, which is just about the right amount to be out snowshoeing. So I'm going to snowshoe on over to the cemetery and see about if there's any opportunities to make any photographs. So I'll, uh, I'll check back in when I get over there. Stopped here at this magnolia. And I've been taking some pictures under the, uh, of these branches here. Let's see if we can look up at them. These branches up here coming down. Fantastic. It was a beautiful day. And I wish we got weather like this a lot. When I move to Maine, we will. That'll be nice. So, as I said, I'm on the snowshoes.
So I'm digging being on the snowshoes. That is always fun. So let me see what kind of compositions I can find. I'm shooting handheld right now. But if I take the time to go ahead and uh, set up the tripod, I'll go ahead and set this up to, to do a static shoot like we do. If not, I'm about to show you some pictures I took under here. It's been an absolutely beautiful day um, to come out and wander around in this winter wonderland. You know, I haven't shot in snow in so long, I'm not 100% sure if, if I got anything good. But we'll see. And this is beautiful, so. Yeah. And it's all been handheld today, which isn't usually how I do it either, but. sun get a sun star with this lens and see what it looks like so I'm gonna keep trying to do that and then uh, I think I'm gonna head on home oh I think the sun's finally popping out of there and uh, oh there it comes all right finally
welcome back everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed those videos and of course I'm dressed completely differently. It's a day later and <laughs> this video is taking forever to put together but I had a great time making those videos. Um, I love going over to that cemetery and shooting over there in the snow was fantastic and going down to the river uh, I really really enjoy that and I think I got a few nice shots in both locations. Um, so the reason I switched everything out was I actually, a day went by, yes, but I'm also now shooting this on the 24 to 120 on the Nikon ZFC. So I think it's going to become my daily shooter. It's going to become the, the lens I carry in my bag at all times. Um, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I'm not getting rid of my 24 to 200. Um, that will serve a purpose also. When I want to go ultralight, don't need the utmost quality. I mean, this quality is really, really, really good, but the 120 is better. Um, also, I frequently need more than one 24, 24 to whatever lens, so I'm not going to get rid of my 24 to 70 2.8 either. This lens is the most astounding of this type of lens I've ever, ever, ever used. Um, really pleased with it. So any type of lens I've ever used. Boy, that made all kinds of sense, didn't it? It's the most astounding 24 to 70 I've ever used. And I had the old F-mount VR version, and that was very, very good. So all three lenses are gonna stay in my, in my paddock, if you will. Uh, reason being, I shoot video jobs sometimes where I need three cameras, so having three normal focal length lenses is, is, a, is a positive. So I'm gonna go down some pros and cons for this uh, new lens and the pros far outweigh the cons for me so far so i'm really really happy about that um i've got my list over here so i'm gonna go ahead and read that you'll see me looking over forgive me so pros first pro image quality um i find the image quality to be astoundingly good um compared to the 24 to 200 um much better uh it sits much closer to the 24 to 72.8 than it does to the 24 to 200. It's that good a lens. So there, there's that. That's that's a really important factor. Um, build quality. The build quality on it is excellent. Uh, it's as good, or almost as good as the 24 to 72.8. Um, it doesn't have the little display, but that doesn't mean the build quality is any less. It just doesn't have the little display. Um, and by display, for those of you who don't know, there's a little display here that shows you. Um, you can make it show you what your f-stop is, uh, your focus point, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, all right. Um, let's see. So, build quality, everything's tight. Uh, I think the weather sealing is great. I haven't tested that yet, but I'm sure it is. I mean, it did get wet in the rain, in the snow, whatever, both days, but. I didn't do a full test. The weather ceiling feels very tight, so when you turn the zoom ring, uh, it's it's nice and smooth, but it's nice and stiff. Uh, not overly so. It's like it's perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, let's see the handling. I love the handling, and that touches on the handling. Uh, the the zoom rotation perfect. It's about ninety degrees. Uh, the focus ring smooth as butter. Uh, the accessory ring. Um, We'll talk about it in the cons. Um, it's not really a con. It's sort of a nit pick. But anyway, everything works very smoothly and, and precisely. Um, let's see. Price. I think the price is very good. Now, if you were talking to a Fuji owner or, some, or an Olympus owner, they'd think the price was exorbitant. Uh, I think it's competitive. Sometimes they're a little more than Sony lenses. Sometimes they're a little less. Canon lenses float in around that area, so it's competitive, but it's competitive to lenses that are 24 to 105. So you're getting an extra 15 millimeters of length um, for competitive pricing um, <clears throat> and convenience. So that's the last one. Of course, this is the most convenient lens on earth, and I've used this as my landscape lens now since it came out. Uh, I got it in the very beginning, and it's a fabulous lens. Um, I was able to work with the shortcomings, uh, you know, flaring and some flaring, not a lot, very little, but, um, I, I don't want them, I don't want to down this lens. This 24 to 200 is, it's excellent lens. Um, I don't want to down it, as I said, but, uh, this one is better than the one you're watching me on right now. Um, 
So flaring is less, ghosting, CA, all of it. CA, chromatic aberration for those of you that are not familiar. Uh, is it as good as this one? Um, it's 98% of the way there as far as all of those things go. Um, but we were talking about convenience, weren't we? I sort of got sidetracked again. Sorry about that. Anyway, convenience. This is more convenient, but this is better quality for close to the same amount of convenience. You lose 80 millimeters, which, um, I don't know. Could be bad, could be good. It really just depends. Like if you're a portrait shooter, you're not going to lose much here. If you're a landscape shooter like me, am I missing that extra 80 millimeters? Yeah, probably, but not overly so. And I tend to also carry a 100 to 400 lens with me anyway. I carry the old Sigma, uh, which was a, a pretty fantastic lens. I've, I've had very good luck with it. Um, let's see. Yeah, so convenience, it's very convenient. It's not as heavy as this, not as big as this. It has um, 50 more millimeters of reach. 98% of the way there, as I was saying a minute ago. All right, uh, let's talk about some cons. Uh, I, now, these cons are all nitpick. They're not really cons. Uh, they're, they're definitely nitpick. Um, the, the one I didn't want to put in as a con necessarily, but just... A curious thing is the um, fact that it doesn't do full mechanical shutter. Uh, I contacted Nikon about this, and that's one of the reasons it took me longer to get this video out. Uh, it does not allow you to set full mechanical shutter inside the camera on Z7, Z6, ZFC, ZF, uh, Z7 II, Z6 II, and obviously Z9. There's no mechanical shutter. Um, I think that's the new way Nikon's going to be going with their lenses, and it's okay. It is actually fine. Um, I have zero real problems with it, other than you can't hear your shutter go off. So you have to be, you have to use other cues, I guess. Or just be careful, whatever. I use delay anyway, and I know it counts up one, two, three, and then I know the shutter's going off. And then when the shutter closes, it does use a mechanical second curtain. Um, so it's not like it's disabling the mechanical shutter entirely. It's just using the second curtain. It's, it's an electronic front curtain shutter is what it's called. And a lot of landscape guys shoot with these because it stops shutter shock from happening. And I will say, because this forces you to shoot in that mode, shutter shock is non-existent. Um, I have noticed shutter shock with any other lens that I can shoot in mechanical if I'm in mechanical mode. As a landscape photographer, I very well, most of the time, shoot with electronic front curtain shutter anyway. But what's neat about this whole system now is they've upgraded the firmware on all the older cameras and, of course, the new ones to um, do an automatic front curtain. So basically up to 1 250th of a second, it is electronic front curtain. And what that means is when it opens, it starts reading the shutter. It doesn't have to have a Sh uh, shutter get up out of or starts reading the sensor it doesn't have to have a shutter get up out of the way and then when it's done it closes it immediately with the shutter what that does is negate any problems you might have with an electronic second curtain shutter second curtain being when it closes um, and it allows for like i said avoiding shutter shock um okay so it doesn't mean anything. It's just a peculiar thing that they won't let you run mechanical shutter. After 1 250th of a second, right, I was just saying, after 1 250th of a second, it does go into mechanical shutter mode. So it's capable of it. It's, it's not like it's a lens that stops you from doing it. It just is getting rid of the mechanical front curtain entirely, which is fine. It shouldn't affect anyone. Um, all right, what else? Um... Size. Um, well, I don't have it here to show you, but this is the 24 to 200. This is the 24 to 70 2.8. I have the 24 to 70 F4 packed up because it's being sold. Um, this sits in between these two. So it's a, it's a little bigger and heavier than this guy, um, but it's not as big and heavy as this guy. In fact, it's quite a bit lighter. So it is still pretty big. Uh, so if you're looking for the compactness of the 24 to 70 f4, you're not necessarily going to get it in this lens. I think, I think it, it, it weighs out though. 
I mean, I think it's absolutely fine that um, it's a little bit bigger because you get so much more out of it. And it's a constant f4 aperture all the way to 120, which is, I think, very important, especially for shooting video. Those are you video shooters watching this. Ah, wait, like I said, not as heavy as this one, but it is still heavier than this light guy or the 24 to 70 f4. So um, I'm not bothered by that, but if you're bothered by a little bit more weight, it may not be your choice. I don't know. Uh, the accessory ring. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. I was like, I'd talk about it in the cons. It's not really a con, but the accessory ring is really, really smooth, but it's also really, really easily hit and turned. Uh, if you have it set to f-stop, you're going to be throwing your f-stop all the time on accident just because you tap the, the uh, accessory ring. You'll get used to it and start checking every time you shoot, and then you won't have a problem. But Or you can turn it off. You can assign them any number of things to the accessory ring or just disable it altogether. Um, it does have, like on this 24 to 70, it does have a function button. Um, that's handy. You can do a number of things with that. So it just gives you another button on your system that will allow you to change settings. All right. So that's that's also a plus, by the way. That's not a, a con. That was a pro, the, the function button. All right. Here's the big one for most of you. Image quality. Uh, we're going to look at some photos here in a second. I'm going to uh, record my screen and we'll look at some photos. Bye. All right. Here we are. I am going to... We're going to deal with the first image that uh, was used in the video. Um, this is those wonderful reeds out in the, uh, the marshland. And we'll go to 100% zoom and we'll go ahead and move around. And I will, uh, I will, show, ooh, hey, I will show you the corners. Um, now it is cropped, so this corner is tight. Uh, I'm going to go to 200% and you can get a really good view of how sharp this lens is edge to edge. Look at that. It's bonkers. Really, really beautiful. Um, I'm really imp impressed with its edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. And uh, here we can get a good look at the color fidelity. Uh, the color on this lens is, is really saturated and really nice. Now, of course, this is not a basic RAW file. I have done some adjusting. But this gives you an idea. So I'm really pleased with the, the color fidelity, uh, the sharpness overall. Just astoundingly good. So there it is at 100%. No complaints. I mean, I suppose I could go to one more in, 300%. And that really gives you an idea of what this lens is capable of. Razor sharp, edge to edge. Look at these little bean pods on the edge here. This is the far left edge of the image. This is not in the crop. Um, the crop is actually over, oops, brush birds, teeth. That's uh, my dog. Uh, the crop is actually on this side up here where you see my pointer. Um, so, but we can zoom in here and get a good look. I don't even know what we're zoomed to, but gives you a really nice idea. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, and whoop. well, that's a pretty impressive look at what you can see there detail wise. So this was shot on an Icon Z7. Here we go. All right, I wanted to see if I could get a Sunstar with this one. Uh, as you see, the Sunstar came out quite nice. I think this was F18, F20. Um, let's go into 100% zoom. We can have a good look around on this image. Or let's go 200% and see what it says on this tombstone. I mean, the color fidelity is astounding. Um, the balance, the overall. Um, but we're still... Sharp as attack in the corners. Um, no real complaints. I don't see any decentering on this lens from what I can tell so far. Very sharp though. Um, the Sunstar looks good. 
as you see, this is normal coloring caused by the coatings. No big deal. Um, overall, really sharp and nice. Look how sharp that is. That's zoomed into like pixel peeping levels. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, this one was at F22, so I made the Sunstar a uh, little more um, defined by going to F22. But you can see, even though I know diffraction is setting in, everything is still pretty much razor sharp. I mean, you're never really going to print at this level. Um, most people aren't, at least. I'm not sure I would print something that was four feet high by six feet across. I, I'd... It's just too expensive. All right, and we'll look at one more. Um, this is one of my favorite images I took the other day. I really like this. I would like this to be... Uh, I don't like any of these colors. I want white. Anyway, so I really, really enjoyed this image. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look in there and see what all of the... Here, we'll go to 200% and look at this detail. I mean, this lens is just ridiculous. Look at how good this looks. I mean, you want me to go in further? I'll go in one more. That's 300%. Look at that. At 300%. Now we're definitely pixel peeping. We're now talking about an image that would print at almost 5 feet high. And now let's go back to 200% and go look at that corner again. Look at that. Let's just go to 100 100% will give you an image that probably would print at about 24 inches. So, I'm very, very pleased. Look at the color fidelity. Look how you can see that moss. We'll go in 200% and take a look at the moss. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I believe this was shot at f11. Can't be sure. You'll know. It was in the video. I may have shot it at something different, but I think it was at 11. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at these last two images just so we can get a feel for the bokeh on this lens. Um, these are both at F4. Um, the first one here, the magnolia leaves. Um, oops. And let's go ahead and go in to 200%. Sorry, 100%. Seriously, look at how clean and sharp that is. And the color rendition on those leaves is ridiculous. But look at our bokeh. It's smooth, it's clean, it's not busy. See back here how beautiful that is. Transition areas, really nice, really smooth. Over here, you see it's a little lively, but it's not overly busy. So, it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at this next one. So, this gum tree uh, that has these gumballs, spiky gumballs, um, let's zoom into 100% and just have a look at those gumballs. Let's zoom into 200% and have a look at those gumballs. Look how beautiful that is. Heck, I'll even go into 300%. Look at that. I mean, that's astonishingly good. So you can see. Let's go ahead and have a look over here. We'll go into 200% and have a look at these bokeh balls here so you see here they're not overly busy everything looks really smooth really nice the bokeh is excellent on this lens um, no real complaints whatsoever so I think you'll agree after looking at those images uh, the image quality on this lens is astounding um, if not astonishing for what it is uh, the old 24 to 120 f mount f4 lens uh, that had some real trade-offs. It wasn't terribly sharp, um, had some CA problems, um, and some saturation issues, frankly. 
but it was a great lens for what it did and a lot of people shot with it especially landscape guys because it had that range better image quality than you know uh, the 24 to 85 35 to whatever it is so it was it was a good option without having to carry the big 2.8 once again we're seeing that here um, excellent image quality blows away the old one absolutely without a doubt so all that said I'm keeping it and it's going to be my daily shooter and uh, I hope the video looks good because I haven't seen it yet this is the first time I'm using it to shoot any video um, but yeah so I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll, I'll do a follow-up review as time goes on. And uh, I'm not sure there's going to be much more I can discover about it. I mean, I've, I've run it through the ringer at this point. I've been on uh, probably six separate shoots with it. Um, shot a variety of things from architecture to... And no, you're not seeing any of that stuff. Um, because I'm just going to show you from these two, these two shoots. Um, but I have shot some architecture. I've shot a couple of portraits uh, and messed around with um, you know, just general photography with it. And it's, it's excellent. So, But like I said, I'll do a follow-up and we'll see, uh, see how that goes. I'm sure it's going to do nothing but continue to please me. So, All right. Guys, I want to thank you for coming. Um, I know you've just sat through me running my mouth a lot. And I hope that you'll come back next time. Uh, if you find this content useful and you've enjoyed it, please, please, please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe. Um, thumbs up and subscriptions, that's what keeps this channel alive. And frankly, as I've said in other videos, I'm not making a dime at this. I can't make a dime until I get umpteen million more subscriptions. Um, but if you're finding my content useful, please do those things. It'll help me get one step closer. Uh, I put a lot of time into these videos, so thank you again. I really do appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Oh, actually, I think next time's going to be, I said this last, last time, but New River Gorge, we're going to finish those up. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.